So I just got done talking with one of the pre-med students that I mentor, and we got talking about getting into medical school with a low GPA. If you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know that I was able to do it, and many of the students that I have mentored over the years have been able to do it. Also, if you guys are interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you guys can reach me on my Facebook page, Med School Mentor. Um, that's where I do all of my mentoring and helping you guys, you know, get into med school, even with a low MCAT and a low GPA. So one of the things we were discussing was if medical schools actually look at your last 60 credits, um, and if that makes, you know, even a difference in getting into medical school with a low GPA, because a lot of people that have a low GPA generally did poorly in their undergraduate degrees during their first or second years of their four year degree. And so it's very beneficial if you know you got your act together your junior and senior year of undergrad and did really well in your science courses during those years and if medical schools genuinely look at your last 60 credits and kind of ignore the first um, two years of undergrad is this the case yes and no I really there's really no way of knowing you know, what these admissions committees are actually looking at unless you specifically ask them. And in that case, they're not gonna tell you unless you're like a family friend of someone um, and really not looking into going into medical school. Otherwise, they're not gonna really disclose any of that information. So everything that we talk about is speculation. It goes off of personal experience, um, experience of others, and so there's really no way of knowing if medical schools are going to overlook the first two years of undergrad and solely look at your last 60 credits. This definitely gives hope to a lot of people. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because false hope is not a great thing. Um, but if that's all you have to hold on to, then, you know, that's that's what you got. Um, I definitely encourage everyone to apply to medical school, no matter what their GPA is, because you never know who's going to look at your application. Um, it definitely comes down to their mood on that day and what the school is looking for. Now, if your only shot of getting into medical school is if medical schools look at your last 60 credits, then I would definitely have a backup plan in place. And there's several things that you can do if you have a low GPA, um, if medical school is still something that you guys wanna pursue. Um, and I have a ton of videos going over special master's programs and post back programs. Um, and who those are for and who they're not for. And you guys can check out those videos on my profile. Um, there's another option that I wanted to share with you guys, and that's um, attending a Caribbean medical school. So I have a buddy who took my advice. You know, he did a special master's program because his GPA was low, um, just like I did. And he actually didn't end up doing very well in the special master's program. And if you guys have talked with me before, you know that if you do a special master's program, you better do well because it's high risk, high reward. And in this case, my buddy didn't end up doing well. Um, so he ultimately didn't get into a US medical school. So he did end up applying to Caribbean medical schools. Um, he ultimately did not get in originally. Um, and they offered him a one semester kind of special master's program in a sense. Obviously it's not a master's program. It's simply a program where they evaluate you and you take the same classes that you would in a special master's program. And they wanna see if you can handle medical school um, over in the Caribbean. So he did that, it was one semester. Um, he ended up doing well. He completed the requirements that were necessary to get into medical school there. Um, and ultimately they offered him an acceptance and now he is about to start his first year of medical school out in the Caribbean. The reason I tell you guys that is because there are other options if you end up doing a special master's program and don't do well in a special master's program. I always recommend trying to do an SMP program first here in the United States, just because going to the Caribbean is a great option However, it's going to pose more um, roadblocks when you finish medical school 
as far as getting residency in the United States. And you know, you guys don't need that extra stress if you can avoid it. Now, for some of you, you can't avoid it. And so that's still a great option going to a Caribbean medical school. I don't care what anybody says, you know, you're still gonna learn the same exact material as you would here in the United States. You're gonna take the same board exams um, and there's no reason you can't be um, an amazing physician by going to a Caribbean medical school. So I don't know where this stigma of if you go to a Caribbean school, you're you're less of a doctor or you're not as good or whatever. There's there's no reason to even consider that or to think that. So if you wanna be a doctor, you can do it and there's options out there for you. This is exactly why I offer mentoring services because I've been in a lot of your guys' shoes and I know what it's like to feel like there's no hope and to feel like, you know, you're, dream of becoming a physician is slowly slipping away. Um, so come chat with me on Facebook, Med School Mentor. Um, we can figure out a path for you. So the other thing is upward trends, which is kind of what looking at the last 60 credits is kind of referring to is, have you been improving throughout the four years of undergrad? And a lot of students hold on to that as well. Like, hey, I don't have a high GPA, but I have a great upward trend. Maybe you got a 2.5 your first year of undergrad, then it was like a 2.7, then you went to a 3.2, and then you ended your senior year with a 3.8. And so you have this upward trend, but yet your GPA is still, let's just say like around a 3.0 or a 2.8 or something like that. Um, that's still considered a low GPA, even though you have an upward trend. The other important thing is what classes were you doing well in um, when you got that 3.8, let's say, um, because was it a bunch of electives? Were they intense science courses? All of these things play a big role when admissions committees look at your GPA. And if you guys didn't know, your GPA is broken down quite extensively um, on your application. And I'm not sure if we actually as students have access to the entire breakdown of a GPA. I honestly just can't remember. So comment down below if you guys um, have any idea of this, but I have seen it before where your GPA is broken up um, in so many different ways and it's analyzed in so many different ways that admissions committees have, you know, an entire view of your four years of undergrad. So they have a GPA of your first year, your second year, third and fourth. They also have a, a breakdown of your science GPA for each year. They have um, a non-science GPA for each year. And so you guys can see that it can be broken down quite a bit and analyzed very thoroughly. And I don't know if admissions advisors really take a deep dive into everyone's GPAs like that. Um, but maybe if you're borderline, then they may take a look and see if you have an upward trend in your science GPAs over the last four years. Um, I don't know. And I really don't think anybody is going to know the answer to this. Um, so if you have a low GPA, I wouldn't count entirely on med schools looking at your last um, 60 credits or 30 credits, whatever they look at or the upward trend, because at the end of the day, they're gonna be able to see even your bad GPAs. And it's really hard for people in general to forget about the bad things, even in life. So if someone looks at your application and the first thing they see is like, hey, this person's science GPA is a 2.7, even though you have an upward trend and maybe got a 3.8, your senior year of college, it's so hard to forget that 2.7. And this is if a human is actually looking at your grades. I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that some medical schools have software that help filter out the thousands of applications that they receive. And it's quite possible that they are able to filter out anybody with below a 3.0 science GPA and totally trash their application. Um, so that's also something that we have to think about. And this video is not meant to discourage you guys. It's simply to 
speak the truth and kind of give everyone a reality check that med school admissions committees are not super forgiving. Um, but there are still options out there for anybody that does have a low GPA like I did. You know, I had a low GPA trying to get into medical school. And so I'm very familiar with this process and I can empathize with everyone who does have a, a low MCAT and a low GPA. And so we got to find a, a good balance of being realistic as well as being hopeful. And with a little bit of luck, you know, hopefully we can all um, get into medical school some way or, or another. So like I said, guys, if you want to chat one-on-one -on -one with me, um, come shoot me a message on Facebook at Med School Mentor, and we can definitely figure out a good way for you guys to get into medical school. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, make sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. It truly helps the channel. It helps me out. And let me know down in the comments, guys, if you want me to make a video on anything specific. And so with that, guys, I'll see you in my next video.